New decade begins, Americans may have reason to feel less hopeful than they were at the turn of the century. And this is not just because of a food scare. We want to take a look back at the last 10 years, look forward to what is next. The issue is likely to dominate in 2010. Here to help us do all that, all CNN contributors, Errol Lewis, New York Daily News columnist, Miguel Perez, syndicated columnist and professor at Lehman College, and Robert Zimmerman, Democratic strategist. Good to have all of you with us. <laughs> I know you're all excited for your dinner after this, as we were talking about while watching this. As we, as we look ahead, though, to 2010, we took a little bit of a look back earlier in the show at the year in politics. Some of the big issues have really come up just in the past week. The big issues for the president, the war on terror, terrorism, going to be huge in 2010. 2010. We saw that with, of course, the Christmas Day bombing. Looking back now, the incomplete implementation of all these recommendations from the 9-11 Commission, AFPAC, as we call Afghanistan and Pakistan, and even today, uh, as we're learning about the dropping of charges for, from 2007 for some of the Blackwater contractors there and the fallout that that's going to have. I'm going to start with you, Miguel. What is the fallout from all of these issues as it relates to the U.S. security concerns? Well, you know, we, I guess most of us, the American people, uh, tend to want to forget. Uh, we want this whole thing to go away. We want we want terrorism to go away, we want the wars to go away, and we want to put it all behind us. But we're in denial because we are a nation at war, mm -hmm. and national security is a problem, is going to be a huge problem for us in the future, and, and, and this is a war in which civilians are the target. So obviously we all have to be aware of this, and you know, we have a new administration in Washington, and we want to leave that whole threat of terrorism behind with the Bush administration. Hello, we're realizing now that it's here to stay. and. In in the last few week, as mm -hmm. you said, all these new reminders. And interesting, Robert, you were shaking your head in agreement at, at, at Blackwater at these revelations that have come in today that we talked about earlier in the show. How does that affect the U.S. overseas, not just in Iraq, but Afghanistan, Pakistan, now Yemen, where clearly the U.S. is not liked, but we've learned that we are actually working pretty closely with the government there. How does that sure. affect efforts there? Well, I think it's important if you look at the decision that was handed down by the federal judge, a 90-page decision, his ruling was to throw the case out because the civil rights and civil liberties of the Blackwater, uh, the Blackwater defendants were not protected. So that's really a lesson to the world about the rule of law in America. Obviously, the Iraqi people feel a great sense of frustration, feel that justice wasn't done. Right. But it's an important lesson to the world about the American system of justice. And it's particularly... But the local population isn't going to read a 90-page finding. No, there's no question about that. But the governments of the world have to understand we are, we are, a, gov we are, we are a government of laws, mm -hmm. not of individuals, not of dictators. And that's a very important juxtaposition towards the seven heroic patriotic CIA officials who died in that terrorist attack attack uh, the other yesterday and it's an important reminder that while we're facing enemies who don't follow don't have don't follow the rule of law don't follow rules mm -hmm. we still are a nation that rises above that when you look uh, Errol when you look down the line at 2010 obviously terrorism is going to continue to be a big issue as we've been reminded about but there are jobs at stake there's the health care debate there are midterm elections what's the headline that you see jumping out at you as, as we launch into this new year uh, a, a distrustful nation tries to restore accountability that to me would be the headline because what I see happening is this last decade was an age of deception and distrust where people found one leader and institution after another had lied to them whether you're talking about faked intelligence that led to the Iraq war or you're talking about uh, the, the enormous hyping that led to the housing bubble or the stock swindlers of major proportions or the corporations that betrayed or, their shareholders or the election that was stolen in 2000 yeah. Let's and, not forget and, that either in terms and, of undercutting you, our confidence in the system. And, and you even have the, the, the pop culture figures like a Tiger Woods, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it continues and it continues. And I, what I see out there is a lot of unfocused uh, uh, anger and anxiety. And, and the election is where you start to focus it. And some people in Congress are going to take hits for things that they kind of had nothing to do with. You know, that's a very, that's a very important point Errol's bringing up because the same anger towards incumbents, the same anger towards the establishment that brought Democrats to power in 2006 mm -hmm. in Congress and the president's in 2008 still exists now. And the real challenge for the Democratic president and for the Democratic Congress and the Obama administration is to try to move from hope into pragmatic achievement. Well, there's also, it's interesting you bring that up because we talked about this poll right off the top before we came to our segment. The CNN Opinion Research Corporation and poll out today. Uh, what the new year holds for the world. 51% of respondents say they're hopeful for the world, 69% hopeful for themselves, 48% are fearful. And when you look at those numbers, we're really talking it's split here. And and a decade ago, 68% of respondents on the cusp of the of the of of the year 2000 said they were hopeful for the world. When you look at this, part of that I would imagine stems from not just the economy, but how bitter and partisan this country has become. How do you 
overcome that? Well, you know, like the world is very scary as it is right now, and it has become scarier in the mm -hmm. last decade. Uh, you know, when the Cold War was over, or we thought was over, except for us Cuban Americans, but right. uh, when the Cold War was segment. over, right, that's another segment, <laughs> but when the Cold War was over, we thought we were going to enjoy this period of peace that was going to be everlasting. Oh, hello, again, it's not there, and now we're, uh, in a, in a, I think we're in World War Three against, uh, except we refuse to call it that. We're in an international war against but Islamic we're terrorists. In, but we're also in a domestic war against ourselves, it seems. I mean, in this country, it has become so bitter, so partisan, and not just when it comes to politics. I mean, on a daily level among people, is that something that we is can overcome? Bitter, is it more partisan than it was during the Great Depression? which, of course, spread enormous panic throughout our nation and destroyed our credibility in our institutions. Is the world scarier than it was during World War II when we faced the threat of Nazi imperialism, Nazi dictatorships, and Japanese imperialism? I think what really is important to remember as we begin the new year is we are the most transparent society in, gov in, in the world. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are a nation that has faced even greater obstacles, as difficult as the time is right now, and our greatest resource is our people and our system of governance. Okay. Shouldn't but, but, be, but, we shouldn't but, lose the, sight of that. But the, the main difference between uh, now and then was that people trusted the government. They trusted the courts. The 30s, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't have uh, uh, this kind of uh, 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 core you know, assumption uh, among a lot of people that all of the institutions are illegitimate. You had a major you know, communist movement, though, in the 30s. You had a major movement towards socialism during that time period. There really was a panic in the streets in many respects. But listen, but we rallied as a nation. Those were conventional wars. This is a different kind of war now. And again, the target are civilians all over the world. It makes a hell of a difference. You know something? Every war in retrospect is a conventional war. At the time, it was an unprecedented war for us to face. And I just think. But this one, we are. I'm going to have to cut you off only because we are in the middle of it okay. right now. But good to have all of you with us. And you know, the upside to all of this is that there's I need to talk about as the year moves forward with all and of you. And we look forward to it as well. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year to all of you. Great to have you with us tonight. Thanks for coming Thank in you. on New Year's Day.